<clears throat> all right, hey, shalom, akiyam, shalom. As always, before I begin, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word and that Ruel. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect that are scattered throughout the four winds of the earth and that are in the hopes of receiving salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, what you just heard me say in the beginning of this video, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of His beloved Son in the Paleo Hebrew. Okay? The pure language spoken of in the book of Zephaniah, uh, the third chapter, where it speaks about how the Heavenly Father said, in the latter days, he would bring back unto the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right, the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a pure language, where we would be calling upon the name of the Heavenly Father in one consent. And that prophecy has taken effect in this generation that we're living in, where the Heavenly Father has finally stirred up the pure minds of the nation of Israel back to the way of remembrance, okay? Coming back to the fact that we are his peculiar people, okay? His chosen nation and that the Heavenly Father, the God of the Bible, pertains to no other nation but unto the nation of Israel, all right? And you can read about this via the scriptures. And you also need a gift, which is faith, in order to receive this, okay? The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah, which the name Yahweh means he is or he to be. Bahashem means in the name. Racha means spirit. And Kodash means holy. And the name of the Heavenly Father's Son is Yahweh Shai. Okay? Who you see in front of you. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua. Which the name Yahweh Shai means he delivers or the deliverer. Okay? And this video is brought to you via the Holy Spirit to continue to preach good tidings to the nation of Israel. To further edify the elect of the Heavenly Father that has been ordained to receive salvation and to continue to show forth what's coming down the drain in these upcoming times, man, okay, via the scriptures, which if you haven't been living under a rock, a lot of um, moves regarding America's militia are being set forth in the states and cities of their country, man, okay, which is nothing but a fulfillment of what's spoken of in the book of Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, Okay, second edge of the 16th chapter, where it speaks about a man shall desire to go into a city, you know, loosely paraphrasing, and he shall not be able to. Okay, why? Because the times that we're coming into is going to be full on anarchy. Okay, matter of fact, real quick, let's look up that word anarchy just to depict the picture um, in the minds of you brothers. Because this is something that um, a lot of Jake doesn't really consider, man. That a lot of death is going to be taking place throughout the cities and states of Babylon the Great. As well as everywhere, man. Okay? But Yahweh Shai, okay, has given us instruction of how to prepare. Which is to what? To build off that cornerstone which is symbolic for himself. Just a quick uh, Google definition for the word anarchy. It says, a state of disorder due to absence or non-recognition of authority or other controlling systems, okay? And one of the controlling systems right now that is being completely disannulled is this technocracy that Esau has created, okay? Not only do you have people giving intel of upcoming blackouts, but Esau's already giving a little bit of preludes with different states in America, okay? Case in point, Oklahoma. Okay, you have a couple brothers down there that testify that a lot of, you know, excuse my language, but shit's hitting the fan, man. Okay, and people are going to be in a state of complete pity, man. Okay, pitiful case is going to be the, it's going to be upon everybody that doesn't come in the name of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai and isn't preparing their house for what's coming down the pipe. Okay, but that's why us Akiam do these lessons, okay, to show you what's coming down and how to spiritually prepare, okay, which, you know, the title of this lesson is Set Thine House in Order, okay, because we're coming into a time where, just like Yahweh Shai said in 
Matter of fact, let me grab that. In Matthew's the 24th chapter, man. Okay? A time that is going to surpass everything that happened in history. This is uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 21. It says, For then shall be great tribulation, okay, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor even shall be. All right, and Yahawashai in the scripture was first and foremost referring to 70 AD, all right? But you can also liken this to the future judgment that's going to be set forth in the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Which is, like Yahweh Shai said, man, it's going to epitomize everything that happened in the past. Uh, reading it in the NLT, it says, For there will be great, I'm sorry, for there will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began, okay? It's going to epitomize the judgment that happened during the time of Noah, okay? Where eight souls were saved. Meanwhile, the rest of the world was completely drowned. It says, and it will never be so great again. Okay, and these are scriptures that people really don't consider. All right, when they read it, they just, it flies right over their head. These are scriptures that should really get your, get the gears in your mind to start spinning. Okay, like, okay, a time where death is going to be everywhere, is going to, you know what I'm saying? This is something that should really put that sense of fear in you, man. To do what? To follow the ways of the Heavenly Father, okay? In order to be a prosperous and, you know, survive the calamities that are going to be befalling upon people, you have to be following Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man, all right? Like Joshua said in the first chapter of his book, Let's get that real quick. Joshua chapter 1. Starting at um, verse 7. Okay, it says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Okay? And what is the law symbolic for? Well, the word of the Heavenly Father, man, okay? And according to John, uh, what is that? The first chapter and the 14th verse, all right? The word was made flesh, which is a representation that Yahawashai is symbolic for the word, man, okay? Following after Yahawashai and following after the footsteps that he took, okay? Carrying that same mindset, being prepared for the worst, all right? And something that the beloved uh, Elder Mawatazak out here in the California camp, always says, get, um, I'm sorry, stay ready so that you don't have to get ready, man, okay? And a lot of Jakes are going to be scrambling in those times to look for the prophets, okay? But when a time of a blackout and all hell is breaking loose and pan pandemonia is out throughout these cities, the Heavenly Father is going to, just like it says in 2nd Ezra, the 5th chapter, man, wit is going to hide itself, so this is the time to take heed, you know, take heed there too, according to the word of the heavenly father and start purifying yourself, man. Okay. It says, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Okay. And this is the time that we're coming into, man, where we're wholeheartedly going to be leaning upon nothing else for provision. But Yahweh wa Yahweh Shai. Okay? And that's why the Heavenly Father is putting us throughout this, you know, since the time that you came into this truth, this purification process. To take out those impurities and start getting the understanding that we have no power. Okay? Our power comes from on high, which is the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Okay? Always having the scriptures at the back of your head as you continue to conduct yourself, man. Okay? Because when the time hits, you're already exercising, you know, that weapon of warfare. Okay? Always, you know, 
putting yourself in the way of remembrance of what our forefathers had to go through, you know, and having that, um, you know, thought in your head that all of our forefathers had to go, go through a state of persecution, okay? The times that we're coming into is nothing new, you know, just like Elijah. When there was a famine, um, if I'm not mistaken, a famine in the land and it wasn't raining, you know? Everyone was in a pitiful case. But what was Elijah doing? He was leaning upon the Heavenly Father for his provision, man, okay? And those same miracles that were bestowed upon him, guaranteed, are going to be showed upon us in these latter days, man, okay? All you got to do is, you know, referring back to the title of this video, set thine house in order. Okay. It says, um, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Okay. Reading in the NLT, it says, meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it okay only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do and like i was saying this is something that we exercise on a daily basis man okay always referring back you know referring to romans the 15th chapter in the fourth verse you know understanding that the things that were written aforetime which is the entirety of the scriptures were written for our learning okay to obtain this hidden wisdom that the Heavenly Father has bestowed us with and, you know, getting used to having it at the back of our hand, man. All right. <clears throat> so from there, let's, um, let me grab second edge of the 14th chapter. And then we'll see where the spirit leads us. I just wanted to get this quick video and just, it was a couple of thoughts in my mind as I was making moves. Because this is a time that we're coming into, man. Okay. And a lot of our people that understand that they're Israelites, they're going to get it the worst, man. Because instead of preparing for a time like no other, they're set on their leads. Okay. And the Heavenly Father is going to be, like it says in the book of Zephaniah. Matter of fact, let's grab that next. Salakia. In the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Or the first chapter. And the 13th verse. Salakia, um, Zephaniah 1 and 12, it says, and it shall come to pass at that time, all right, the time of Jacob's trouble, where the heavenly father is going to truly test your characteristics, whether or not you're going to be leaning upon him or whether or not you're going to be leaning upon the power of Egypt. Okay. That I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees. Okay. Those that are going to be caught sleep, all right? Just like Yahawashai said in, you know, Mark the 13th chapter, Matthew the 24th chapter, Luke 21, okay? To take heed, watch and pray, okay? Because if you don't follow those, you know, morals, guess what? You're going to be caught up with these affairs. And at the end of the day, when the Heavenly Father starts searching us with those candles, He's going to catch you sleeping and at the end of the day, you're not, you're going to be left here. Okay. And you're going to have a first class seat ticket to the lake of fire, man. It says, um, Salak, you're reading it from the top again. It says, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that they in their heart, Salak, that say in their heart, the Lord Yahweh will not do good, neither will he do evil. Okay? And this is ultimately the mindset of our people. Ultimately, they don't have the vision, which is symbolic for the prophecy of what's coming down the pipe, man. Okay? A lot of our people, like it says in uh, Isaiah the 30th chapter, man, they love captivity. You know? So from there, um, going back to second edge of the 14th chapter, starting at the, um, the 13th verse, it says, now, therefore, set thine house in order. Okay. And reprove thy people, comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. 
All right. And this is something that, you know, brothers and sisters do on a daily basis, man. Not only being vexed in our uh, spirits of the filthy conduct of these people, but just like it says in Ezekiel 9 and 4, man. All right. The people that were exempt from judgment and got the mark, which the Hebrew word for mark is thawa in the foreheads, was those that were sighing and crying and pouring out their complaints unto the Heavenly Father of all the abominations that were being done in the midst of Jerusalem, man. Okay? And we're following in that same stead. Doing the exact same thing. <clears throat> excuse me. Doing the exact same thing in the city of America, man. We're complete wickedness is everywhere that you turn all right verse 14 it says let go from the mortal thoughts cast away the burdens of man put off now the weak nature all right and this is the time that we're coming into man all right we were full-on gonna be working out our salvation with fear and trembling okay walking on faith and trusting in the heavenly father that he preserves us from the said judgment, okay? This is the time that we're coming into, man, where we're all going to be working out our own salvation, all right? There ain't nobody that can hold your hand in these times. It's on you to prepare yourself and get ready for what's coming down the pipe, man. Because like it says in the book of Ezekiel, uh, I think... The 14th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, or 12. Ain't nobody going to help you out, man. Okay? But the Heavenly Father. And if, if, okay, you're doing the right thing. This is Ezekiel chapter 14. Um, You know what? It might be the 12th chapter. No, it's lucky. Yep. It's Ezekiel 14. Starting at the 13th verse, it says, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Okay, and this is the, the case that we find ourselves in right now, man. Okay, this country is abundant in sin. Okay, like it tells you in Joel, the third chapter, that the harvest is pretty much right, man. Okay? Just like during the time of the Amorites in, uh, what is that, Genesis, the 15th chapter? Okay? There was a level of wickedness to the point where the Heavenly Father was like, all right, let me, let me step in now. Okay? We're pretty much almost there. Okay? Just by measuring the time diligently in itself, you see that this place is completely crooked, man. Okay? Untoward. And like the scripture later on said, man, famine is coming. And this is exactly what we see happening throughout the states of America. Okay. You have uh, produces, factories that, you know, produce eggs and other, you know, things of that nature. They're being completely swiped under the rug, man. Okay. And not only that, but you have these... um elites and other people that are put on a pedestal that have money and that are being manipulated by the higher ups which ultimately is the heavenly father don't get it twisted they're buying land okay just like bill gates buying acres and acres of land to create this gmo processed food that's going to be ultimately created so that when the time where the mltb is mandated you're going to have to take it in order to buy certain produce that they're creating, man. Okay. Verse 14, it says, Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, which were all men that were, you know, beloved by the Heavenly Father and held their integrity as they went throughout their day-to-day -day tribulations, it says, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness Say it the Lord power, man. Okay. Reading it in the NLT, it says, Even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were there, their righteousness would save no one but themselves, says the sovereign Lord. Okay. 
Just like during the time of Lot, man. Okay? The only people that were saved in that time were Lot and his um his daughters. All right? Everyone else was on some bullshit, you know, lollygally. Not considering what Lot was saying. All right? No one was saved but Lot and his family. Just like Noah as well, man. Okay? And that's the beauty about this truth. We see that the same story is being recycled on and on and on. To the point where we're living right now as the seconds go by in that same story. Okay? So we got to take heed, Akiyam. And the few sisters that are sincere and are in order. You know, and it continues to say the same thing, man. I recommend you, you know, you brothers, if you have some spare minutes, read this chapter. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 15. Okay. Matter of fact, let me read 14 again. It says, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature. Okay. And the reason why I brought out Ezekiel, the 14 chapters to also, you know, emphasize on the fact that you know we got to start departing ourselves from all these outlets of society man okay whether it's your family whether it's your girl that you're you know dealing with that may be wicked you know fit in that variable in your life man okay you have to start spiritually detaching yourself and having at the back of your head that you know you might have to make moves in those times man okay but like the scripture said, man, put off those mortal thoughts, okay? Those burdens and that weak nature. Verse 15, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. You know, and like I said, a beautiful point is family. You know, we all love our family, but at the end of the day, we understand that the Heavenly Father isn't saving everybody, man, okay? And His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and we can't even fathom what he, the Heavenly Father thinks of, Okay? It says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. All right. And this is uh, during the time of Ezra, when he was living throughout the, um, the medial Persian Empire. Okay. Verse... Um, 16 again because he pretty much regurgitated i'm sorry um yeah i pretty much said the same thing man okay it's gonna be a day like no other where great tribulation is gonna man it's gonna make everything else that happened in the past look like a walk in the park man okay verse 17 it says for look how much the world shall be weaker through age so much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. Okay? Point blank, man. And that's the time that we're coming into. So set your house in order and continue to follow Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, um, let me grab Luke, the sixth chapter, and then we'll close from here. Luke chapter 6, verse 47. It says, Whosoever cometh to me, and this is Yahweh speaking, and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Okay? And like we were going into in, you know, the book of Joshua, the first chapter, by taking heed to the commandments and the law, which is symbolic for Yahweh this is what you're likened to. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Okay? And what is that rock symbolic for? Yahawashai, man. All right, matter of fact. First Peter chapter 2. Matter of fact, it's a little more up, Salaki. First Peter chapter 2, verse 6. Okay. Yep, it says, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold. I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. 
if you've been following along, this is symbolic for Yahweh Shai. All right, and the scripture that's being referred here is um, Isaiah, the 28th chapter, where it says the exact same thing. And he that believeth on him, matter of fact, I'll read it again. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And that's what our house, first and foremost, is being built upon, man. That chief cornerstone. Verse 7. Unto you, therefore, which he is precious. I'm sorry. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. But unto them, which be disobedient, which are building their house on a different, you know, frame. The stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Okay. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble and I'm sorry, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Okay. And that even also shows you that Yahweh is the word stumbling upon what the rock, the word. If you're putting the pieces together, you can receive it. Okay. But that's what we're building upon. Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. It says. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house. And that stream is synonymous for all this tribulation. So on and so forth, that's going to befall what we're coming into, man. Okay, the famine. Calamities. All that is happening. I'm sorry, all that is being orchestrated for that moment in time, man. Matter of fact, um, just to back up the point about the vehement waters. Isaiah 59. Yep, I knew it was Isaiah 59 verse 19. It says... So shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the West. And that's where we're at right now, man. We're in the West. Doing exactly what it said. Fearing the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahashai and by fearing the Heavenly Father. And guess what? We're starting to follow the principles of Yahweh Shai. Okay? In order to get wisdom. It says, And his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood... All right, which is synonymous for that vehement water hitting upon the house. The spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. All right. So if you're building upon that, I'm sorry, if you're building your foundation upon that rock, okay, and you're coming up the right way, the Heavenly Father is going to give you that spirit to endure whatever you have to go through, man. Okay. That's what's going to get you throughout these. Perilous times that are ahead of us. And nothing else, man. Okay? When you consider what's coming down, there's no way in hell your own power can combat that, man. Okay? You have military troops that from little kids have been training their entire goddamn life to get busy on these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? And on top of that, you have AI technology robots, dogs, things of that nature that are targeted to kill our nation, man. Okay. What do you think your penny little arms can do against that? The scriptures refer to our nation as being a worm. Okay. The only strength that we have is the heavenly father. And if you don't have that intimate relationship with the heavenly father, you're done, man. Okay. Point blank and the discussion. It says, And when the flood arose, the stream be vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. And like it says in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of our times. Okay. The strength of salvation and the fear of the Heavenly Father is his treasure. And like it says later on, for it was founded upon a rock. Yahweh Shai, okay? And the 49th verse refers to those that are building off the wrong way, okay? That are coming up 
you know, another way into the house. You got to go through the door, man. Okay. Which is Yahawashai. Verse 49, it says, But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did be vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Okay? Point blank period, man. So it's time to, if you haven't been already, right now, man. Okay? Set thine house in order. Get into the scriptures and inquire of the prophets of the Heavenly Father of how to get yourself in order if you're an Israelite, okay? So with that, Lord's will, this video was, you know, edifying to the hopeful elect and edification was brought forth. Once again, giving all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect. And until next time,